If you think about the best salespeople that you've ever met, they're probably great communicators. And there's a couple key things that you can do with your voice to also become a great communicator. It's by focusing on tone. This is something I wish somebody told me a lot earlier on in my career. There's things that you can change that get people to want to listen to what you're saying. Now, there's a couple elements on, the, on things that you can change about your voice to help improve. The first is the speed. Sometimes when you get really excited about something, you tend to talk really fast. And sometimes there's certain people that you speak with that slow down. And I realized I learned this at a young age. My father was a World War II vet. And as he, I was growing up with him, I remember him speaking so slowly. And that was a really great sales lesson because it taught me that sales is not about what I want to communicate. It's about how the other person receives information. So we can match our speed to make sure that it's at the right pace for the person that we're talking to to communicate with us. The second is volume. Sometimes when you speak to somebody that's very loud, it can become grating over time. But sometimes when you get somebody to drop their volume, you listen in very closely. And so we can use this to our advantage to change how we communicate with somebody if we want to go deeper or we want to change the way that we're communicating to make it more interesting. Then we go into one of my favorite words, prosody. This takes into account two things. One, the root word pros, which is your word choice. If you're using complex language that the other person doesn't understand, you're not communicating very effectively. So make sure that you choose the right words that don't go over someone's head or make them feel like they're not very smart. Then we go into the melody part or how you say those words. Sometimes when we get uncomfortable, we end our sentences in a question, even though it's not a question, and this can get really hard to listen to. So make sure that you don't do up talk or just completely speak monotone and never change the inflection of your voice and it always sounds at this one level because that can get really old. And one of the most powerful things that you can do when you're communicating with your voice is silence. Nothing wrong with a bit of silence. Silence lets somebody understand what you just said, lets them think about it a little bit more deeply, or they usually will fill that silence because we all get a little uncomfortable, especially when it gets around that three second mark. So we have to use silence to our advantage. Don't fill it in with filler words like, uh, yup, cool, got it, perfect, awesome, uh-huh. All of those don't add to the conversation. Instead, let there be a little silence, or if you ask a great question, it's okay to not fill it in with another question right away. The other elements of communicating very effectively has to do with asking questions and listening effectively. There's two fundamental types of questions. You can ask open-ended and closed-ended questions, but whatever type of question that you choose to ask, realize to be an effective communicator, you wanna make it easy for them to know what kind of answer that you're looking for. So don't ask something that's way too open-ended, like, what keeps you up at night? because sometimes the answer to that question is not something that you can help with. Then we go into, after asking a great question, we have to listen. It is so common for us to ask a great question and get in our head and think, oh, that was a great question. What am I going to ask next? Instead, we have to learn how to listen. And active listening takes a huge amount of brain power. The best technique to show somebody that you're actively listening is something called mirroring. This is where you listen for an unusual word that a customer says or whoever you're talking to and work that in to a summary or a follow-up question. If someone, for example, tells you, oh, I'm really struggling with ABC, the correct response is to say, I'm sorry to hear that you're struggling with that. The incorrect response of not showing active listening would be paraphrasing it. Like, oh, sounds like that's difficult for you. Difficult and struggle are two different words. That's called paraphrasing. And usually in school, we're taught to put it in your own words. But when it comes to effective communication, make it about the other person. 
And finally, it's always powerful to keep notes. Keeping notes by hand is unfortunately proven by science to be way more effective than typing. And I say unfortunate because I can type about a thousand times faster than I can handwrite. But ultimately, a really powerful way to make sure that you stay engaged in the conversation is write your notes by hand. This will force you to not capture everything and then listen to the things that might stand out as most important. Use this framework to help you communicate more effectively with whoever you're speaking with so that you talk in a way that people want to listen to you.